let's all give the Lord a much better clap offering. Are you glad to be here this evening? And let's all say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. And let's say thank you, Father. And then let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet such a time as this. For Lord, indeed, it is written that the psalmist said he was glad when he said unto him, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Therefore, Lord, with gladness, Lord, have we come before you again. We assemble under your feet as your children, as your servants. Lord, you may draw us unto you and give us your word this evening again. Grant us to understand your word and let your word be effective in our lives. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all be seated, church. We, we are continuing, or we are concluding, we are finishing our teachings on the church. This evening, we are concluding or finishing our teachings on the church this evening. And um, for the past two weeks, we've been looking at the benefits of the assembly, uh, how the church helps us the benefits that we get from the church. And we have said that these teachings are of utmost importance. These teachings are very, very important because when you understand these things, when you understand them and you expect you as a child of God, as a Christian or Christian, expect to receive these things from your church it will enable you to identify which church is good and which church is bad because if you are keen on getting these benefits and want to be in a good church and a good church can be identified you know a good church by knowing these things so that if you are in a church where these things are absent, they are not there, you don't see them, they are not being practiced, and you, you deceive yourself that you are in a church, um, you may perish. In fact, you may perish for that. And therefore, we say that these things that we have listed are, should be there to benefit you, they should be there for your good, for your good. And in this life, anything that you do, you have to find out why am I doing this? What do I gain? We are me here, who fast work, and fast work, Ben, I mean, now what benefit will I get for what I'm doing? So, you be in a church, it's something that the Bible makes it clear that our, our ultimate goal is heaven, that you and I will by all means end up in heaven where we'll spend eternal life. But to help you to make it to heaven, these things might be here in the church. And because today is our concluding teaching, we want quickly, I want to list them again. We began by saying that one way the church will benefit by having doctrine, good preaching, good preaching, look out for good preaching and sound teachings. It's not every church that preach the word of God properly. And it's not all churches that practice sound or teach sound doctrine. Especially in the, especially in the age that we are in now, all kinds of churches all doing their own things. Some of them, many of them, directly against the word of God. And they still call themselves churches. So we said that for the church to be of benefit to you, look out for good preaching, good preaching, and sound teachings. 
like we are hearing tonight, sound teachings, New Boy Town, good preaching, sound teachings, correct teachings, proper teachings, not just anyhow. We went into details. We're not going to go into details. Then fellowship, the church that will promote fellowship. Make sure, make things ready. Make sure that everything is in place for you to be fellowship with one another. Because you want to come together. When we come together as an assembly, fellowship is when we all coming together. It's only when we come together we say that um, we invite the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's when the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes down with spiritual gifts, prophecy, revelation, and the power gifts. It's only when the church comes together. So a good church must must encourage, must promote, must do everything make it possible for people to come together coming together in fellowship with one another that's very important so that when people are not coming i get interested why is this person why haven't we seen this person for three weeks four weeks so are you someone a person who sits next to you if you don't see him or her for two or three weeks find out and encourage him or her to come fellowship a church a good church must encourage must teach and preach fellowship and then in a good church a good church must be holy ghost filled and this is where i find it difficult to see how people can be in churches where the power of god is not seen the presence of the holy spirit is never felt it's never felt and because because of ignorance they are ignorant they don't know so they are in the church and for years they don't see anything to show that God is with them there. They come together and that is it. And one way, the only way you can tell is by signs, wonders, miracles, deliverances and healings taking place in that church. So after here we may find ourselves in a different church somewhere. And in the church, it's all ceremonial. It's all ceremonies. Routine, we just go and come. Go and come. We go, go to the order of service, and then go home. And then you think you're in a good church, you're making a mistake. I don't, I don't care what anybody else says, but this, I'm going by what the Bible is teaching. And we gave you scriptures to support these things. We read the scriptures again. And then we, we said that the ordinances... Any good church must be careful to teach and observe what you call the ordinances. The Lord's Supper or communion service must be there properly, not with alcoholic wine, not with alcohol. Communion service or, or Lord's Supper, anointing service, wedding ceremonies properly, proper wedding ceremony. Not a church that will allow members to go and have weddings on the beach. Now, church members, Christians are having weddings in the garden centers, on the beach, floral centers. They are having weddings even in homes. In homes, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not proper. It's not, it's not allowed. In a good church, must make sure that weddings take place in the house of God, and the order of the wedding service must be properly officiated well officiated very very well officiated and when a church depart from these things God also depart from that church the Holy Spirit will just withdraw and there are people who are calling themselves pastors DJs, they are calling themselves ministers and they have no idea they have no idea about these things and people are in their churches so weddings must be properly officiated child naming ceremonies in the house of God properly done, well done well done I, I was in a certain church many years ago and I was shocked when they had to name a child the course of service, the pastor just in, called the mother, the baby to the, to the baby and said well I named this child this and then they, they just within 30 seconds he had finished he went and sat down and that was it, that's how they did the naming ceremony and I told you how they did one in the church. Someone told you how they one in the church, and the, the whole thing was traditional. Naming ceremony in a church, 
And the minister was saying that I will make a time near your money, you know, from the pulpit. And they say, Chow, Wanyaba. That's how they were doing their naming in the church. Properly done. So if you don't know how to do it, look at the way we do it here. Learn, ask questions. And then um, child dedicate children dedication service. Induction or induction ordination of church leaders, and then even funeral and uh, and burial services. There are many pastors who don't know how to conduct funeral and burial services. I I was in a, at a funeral service of a, a very a family friend a few years, not too long, a few years back, and a very eminent, a very eminent man of God who is president of a church. In fact, holds a very big position in the in the Ghana Pentecostal Council, big position there. And he was officiating. And the text, the funeral service, the text that he chose was not was not proper. And the way he preached, the way he preached was, was not right. Um, he made everything so jovial, cracking jokes and laughing. You know, a funeral service Every good child, they are meant. This is a time. They are. They, they are meant. It's a time for, for evangelical preaching. So you are not preaching to a dead body. The brother or sister who, who is gone is going to be with the Lord. Now the 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 sermon must be, sermon must be targeted at those who are living, that they will wash their ways and repent, so that they also go to heaven. So, the message must be evangelical. Must 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 witness people that they will, they, will, they, will, they will repent what they are ways. It's a very good time to, to witness to people and, and preach Christ, preach salvation, preach eternal life. But there you have somebody who has just left and gone to view the Lord. This is not a time for preaching um, prosperity and um, joking and laughing. No. At the same time, sympathizing with the bereaved so all these things go into what a good church should be. Um, and then we look at common cause. Any good church must have a common cause and mutual assistance. Loving one another, sympathy for one another, helping one another when possible. No division in the church. No hatred. You are not happy when your sister or your brother is in trouble because the division, there are divisions. You don't belong to his kind. In fact, now where there's enmity in the church, it's an abomination. An abomination, and that's one thing that that I cannot tolerate at all. Enmity and sectarianism in the church, division in the church. So common cause and mutual assistance, helping one another when possible. And then we said a good church must help you by enhancing they will help it should help you by enhancing worship and commitment the good church must show you how to properly worship god how to worship god properly if you have to pray not the lord's prayer the lord's prayer is not prayer it's just a model prayer so any church that prays using the lord what they call the lord's prayer that is not prayer so the church must teach you how to worship God properly. How to pray. Hmm? How to pray with your understanding and in tongues. Even how to worship. Different between worship songs and praise songs. Worship and praise. Pray in tongues and singing in tongues. With the, with, in the spirit. That's what God, pray in the spirit and singing in the spirit. A new song. All these things you must know. Being a good church, you have to know all these things. What do we mean by praying in the spirit, singing in the spirit, singing a new song? What does it mean? So worship and then commitment. The church must also encourage you to be committed. The church should not be happy because you have thousands. They should not be happy when many of you are not committed. You don't come and ask when you like. We don't. We don't. We come only once every three months. The church must be concerned. Any good church must show concern. Must show concern. 
you know, now it's, it's, a lot of times I, I say, who have I not seen? And this one I was asking my wife, my sister, that I've not seen for a long time. And then we say, oh, she only comes now and, now and then, only now and then. For a long time now, she only comes once every two months. And, you know, I'm concerned, concerned about her for her. So in a good church must teach you to or show you how to enhance, build up, increase, grow up your worship of God and your commitment. So you get more and more committed. Become more and more committed. And all these might be in the church and also in the house, in your workplaces. So you don't you don't you don't just see these things only in the church. Then when you go home, you are a different person. At home, you are a different person. At, at the workplace, they don't even know that you are, you are a Christian. So the church must enhance your worship of God mm, and also your commitment. Where you work, how they know you. Do they know you as a Christian or they know you as one of them or just a co-worker? What is going on between you and your children, you and your husband, you and your wife in the house? Are you actually showing that you are a worshipper of God there? All these things must be seen in the church. Because they are there for your benefit. They are there for your benefit. Now, if you don't see these things, then you may have to change church. Change church. Don't just say, oh, I'm in that church. So that is it. And the church is not helping you in any way. Amen. So let's go to our text again. Acts chapter 2. The benefits of the assembly. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. The benefits of the assembly. Today we'll give the last three and then we'll finish. The benefits of the assembly continue. The continuation of what we started two weeks ago. The benefits of the assembly. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, daily, those who were being saved. Hallelujah. Now, one thing that will benefit every believer in any church is church dis- 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 discipline. Church discipline. Church say discipline. Discipline is not meant, if you read my book, discipline is not designed to punish anyone. It's not, it's not meant to punish anybody. Bible says that if you if you have a son and you don't uh, you don't chastise that son, then that you don't love that child. That child is an illegitimate child. But anyone who loves his son, daughter will chastise or discipline that child, so the child will grow up in the way he should go. So discipline in any church, there should be discipline. Church say discipline. We know that discipline is not sweet. Discipline is not palatable. Discipline may not look good in the eyes of many, but they are designed to benefit you, to be of benefit to you, to be of benefit to you. They are a means of correction. They are meant to correct you. So when you are going astray, you are getting lost to bring you back, back into the fold, into the flock, so you won't get lost. Therefore, any church that does not have discipline is not a good church. And the discipline must be done with, in love, with love. 
not not with hatred no love and the ultimate one is excommunication because there comes a time when the person the member has done something that is so bad it's so open it's an open sin we call it open sin that if that person is not given a chance to go and join another church and repent and start again somewhere and stay in the church that sin will infect the rest of the church it will infect the church praise the lord in fact the church i know of a case where a, a, a brother approached a sister and uh, invited her to be his girlfriend girlfriend not courtship girlfriend and the sister said ah how can you say this don't you know we are we are christians we are not supposed to do that and the brother said oh after all this person these people are doing it in the church and the, you know, the pastor is looking on, so why can't we also do it? It can, it can actually spread. Jesus said, a little leaven, leaven the whole lamp. A little sin can make the whole church defiled. A little leaven, leaven is yeast, leaven the whole lamp of bread. Discipline is very important. Now, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. 15 to 17. Matthew 18, 15 to 17. Discipline. Matthew 18, 15 to 17. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. Tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, is that in your Bible? It says, even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. In other words, when the church comes in to settle a dispute, the church comes in to settle a matter, and the person refuses to hear, even the church, after you have approached him or her, and with others, and he's still adamant, tell it to the church. And when the church elders invite him and he will not hear them, the Bible says that let him be, then he's an, he's an unbeliever. A heathen. Let him be like an unbeliever. In other words, he's no longer, he doesn't fit to be in the church anymore. And a tax collector. He has, it's a big sin. It's a great sin. Let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. It means that he, 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 he now he's only fit to be excommunicated. Not him. He doesn't belong to the church. He doesn't belong to the church. And so these things are true. These things are true. They are true. So the church has authority to discipline. The church has authority to discipline. The church has been given authority by God. To, and the discipline is in love, out of love. Not to punish you or to, to, to tear you down or take you down, but to correct you. Correct you. Recently, I know of a, a brother in our church who, who did something which was not good. Not good. When I, tried to, when I tried to correct him, first my wife tried to correct him. A member of this church rose up and even insulted my wife. She had done, he had done the wrong thing and uh, rose up, insulted them. And he did another wrong thing and I came in to correct him and he, he rose again. He said all sorts of things about me. Also, how did I get to know? God arranged that when he was saying this, I was there. The person he was talking to on the mobile phone, I was with that person. The person put on, and I could hear everything he was saying. The things he said about me, he said, you won't believe it. You won't believe it. 
He came for miracle service. And this person was trying to come for what we pray for. In fact, I invited him. That was coming. The Holy Ghost threw him back. But he just found himself thrown away. He couldn't, he couldn't approach the pulpit. I myself was shocked. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was surprised. Twice he tried to come forward. He couldn't come forward. He couldn't approach the pulpit. I didn't throw him away. Holy Ghost just threw him back. So let us be very, very careful. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 and 10. 2 Corinthians 13, verses 5 and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, first verse 5. Says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not, do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified. Unless indeed you are disqualified. Then verse 10 says, Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for distraction. Let me read it from the NIV, the same scripture from NIV. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 and uh, 10. I'll see that quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, this is 5 and 10, NIV. Verse 5 says, Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Unless, of course, you fail the test. Then verse 10 says, This is why I write these things when I am absent. That when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority. The authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. So Paul sometimes will write to the church because if he was to go there himself, what had happened was so, so annoying, so discouraged that he would, he would, feel, he would feel so hang, angry that he would be so harsh, so sweet that he may do something. So you write to them. Okay? Otherwise, if I were to come myself, what I may do, I may use my authority and I may look very harsh, appear to be very, very harsh. So discipline must be seen in the, and therefore you're good. If you're in a church where there's no discipline, everybody's doing what he or she likes and they are still in the church, they are still in the church, then that church will not help you. No, sir, no, madam, it will not help you. That church will not help you. The Holy Spirit will draw. The Holy Spirit will just stand back, move out of the church. And when the Spirit of God departs, other spirits come in. That spirit come in. So you must look out for discipline. Discipline. Amen. Are we learning something this, this, this evening? Let's say thank you, Jesus. And then last but one, obedience to God's word. The church must make sure that people obey the word of God. Preach the word, teach the word and, and ensure that as much as people, people, be, be, people obey the word, there must be obedience in the church. And don't forget the word of God is for information. So make sure that people get the information. So the church that you are in, make sure you are getting information. You are learning. 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 Things you didn't know last year, know them this year. Don't be at the same level. Grow in your knowledge. Get more information. Get more understanding from the word of God. And then what, the more you get, the more you obey. And then there should be transformation. The church will be able to transform you. The church must be able to transform you. And I get very upset when I see that people who have been in the church for over 10 years and they, are, they, are still, they still have not changed. 
or they are changing something but in some other area they have not changed at all they are like the heathen they are like like tax collectors they have not changed the word of god has not made any impact on them i get very upset because then it's very discouraging it can discourage the man of god it can discourage the pastor so after all that i've done how can my brother do how can my son do this he has been in the chair for 10 years. He has said everything. So how could he do this? After all, all that we have taught, how could my daughter do this? My daughter or my son that I, I thought was now edified, have grown in the faith. How could he do this? It's very discouraging. So the church must make sure that you get transformed. You get trans- there's been transformation. Renewal of mind, transformation, not conformation, don't conform to the world. But you get transformed by the renewing of your mind, by getting the information. And then, inspiration. You might get more and more inspired, inspired. So that things that you, you didn't think of doing last year, this year, now you're ready to do them. Now you are fired up. Things thought you thought you were is that me doing this yes it's you inspiration you get inspiration to do things that you're not doing before not the same level all the time or even going back and back and back and back and backwards that's no good so the church must make sure that you get information transformation inspiration by obedience to the word of God obeying the word of God Amen. That's why people don't obey. Well, then with discipline comes in. One doesn't obey and uh, you, are sure you, are not, you are not obeying. Then they are disciplined. It, ma- it doesn't matter who you are. You can be an elder, a pastor. If you are a pastor, that means that you, you are out. If you are a pastor, you cannot discipline you in the church. You cannot say, you are too assigned. Have you seen a pastor, you are too assigned? Or do we do a two pastor assigned? <laughs> that's like a whole corona. And many, that's how many, many pastors have been here, they've gone. They've gone. But they themselves were not obeying the word. And if you are a member, then you have to be disciplined. Therefore, I myself, I bring myself under discipline. I check myself to make sure that when I've discovered that I myself will not be disqual- disqualified. Hmm. Like Paul said. When he had disqualified others, he made sure he himself is not disqualified. And then last, finally, we come to a very important point. Last one, number 10. And that is what we call pastoral oversight. Pastoral oversight. There must be leaders in the church to oversee. Oversight means oversee. Make sure everything is going on well in the church. In other words, some people must be in authority with oversight. So we say general overseer, the general overseer is supposed to oversee the church generally. Generally. Making the big decisions, big policies that affect all the branches. But the, the pastor should be, or the elders in the church uh, pastor, elder, bishop these are all overseers deacons and deaconesses these are overseers departmental leaders, overseers you are overseers in your in your department so when I say pastoral oversight that means it's not just the pastor it means that leaders must oversee things, so that if we see something going on wrong it's your duty to do something about it it's your duty to do something about it you are not just there and then things are happening. You have to enforce. You have to make sure. When you say church is starting at 9 o'clock, 9 it should start. You don't say, oh, the people have not come, so we wait till 9.30. No. Pastor oversight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. An overseer is somebody who has oversight. Without oversight, there will be chaos. So in a church where there's no proper pastoral oversight, you will not gain much in that church. You will not get anything or not much from the church. 
Praise the Lord. And it's happening in many churches. The pastors are there, they don't, they don't open their eyes to see what is going on. They don't, they don't even notice what is going on. And even when they notice, they don't do anything about it. As long as the church is packed with people and they are getting their offering and their tithes and they are getting their pay, they have their accommodation, they have their fuel, they are okay. They don't care. They don't care. So, the church that you are in, how much pastoral oversight is there? I, even as a a general here, I oversee things in detail. I don't just look at things generally. I look at the details. The details. The details. Very, very important. Just last week, there's a um, there's a lady in a Tessie church who we found had been living with a man for 20 years and they are not married and we got to know about two or three weeks ago two or three weeks ago we got to know so we called the lady and the, and, and the husband and uh, we counsel them as what to do, what should they do, what they must do. They should go and regularize their relationship, get married, and then come. We've done that to many people. So touch it, they say, Oh, we are the church that sack people. Someone is sure, man. That's what they that's what they call us. Many churches don't do it. The pastor knows that there are people in the church living in fornication. The pastors know that there are drunkards in the church. The person you are sitting next to is blowing fuse, blowing fuse. And some born who die, death we are that. That is in the church. That member in the church beats his wife at home. Or he and the wife, they fight. Blows. The pastor knows it. They don't know anything about it. There's no oversight. So we counsel this couple so they should go and get married. Then they are free to join the church. And I thought the matter was over. Because I met them with the elders and the, the church leaders. So I thought the matter was over. But I went there yesterday. I went to a church. I wasn't there on, on Sunday. But I went there yesterday to the office and I saw a tight envelope that this woman has come to pay. I saw, I was looking through the tight and I saw this envelope. The woman had come to pay her tithe. So that you know, told me that then she was in church on Sunday. I mean, otherwise, where would her tithe be? Her envelope was there. So immediately, I called some of the leaders. Uh, why was this lady in the church on Sunday? And they gave various explanations. Satisfactory. They gave satisfactory explanations. The answer they gave me was satisfactory. But I made it clear to them. Okay, even though the reason they are giving are satisfactory or they sound okay, but still the point is that this lady, this woman, and her living boyfriend for 20 years, I won't call her a husband, are not allowed in the church until they have married. They have, gone to, they have gone to regular their marriage. So tell them, call them and tell them that they are, they are not welcome in the church again. And when they, now you show them what to do. They should go to Lekman and do what they have to do. And when they bring their certificate to show that they are married, oh, we we'll welcome them. We'll be very, very happy. And the angels in heaven will be, will be, will be, will be celebrating. It'll be great joy in heaven. But one sinner who repents. So what you are doing is to help them. We are helping them rather to make it to heaven. We are not, we are not just sacking them or, or punishing them, but we are showing them the way. And if we, we are not harsh, we don't insist on it, they will say, oh, well, hear me. A couple, I, I, many years ago, they have been in the church for five years. When I got there, they were not married. They have been in the church for five years. So it was hard to ask them to leave. So I said, please, 
will give you two months. Do it. Go and do it quickly. For over one year, they are giving excuses. We couldn't meet the uncle. We want to meet the uncle. He wasn't there. We met the uncle, but the aunt, the aunt was not there. Then the aunt came. The father was not there. The father came. The sister was not there. Excuses. For one year, any time I saw them in the church, uh, all the anointing just dissipated. Each time I saw them in the church, and we are calling them, say, Mr. and Mrs. That's what fooled us. That's what deceived us. Mr. and Mrs. The woman had taken the man's name, Mr. and Mrs. And they were not Mr. and Mrs. They were, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. So, there must be pastoral oversight. A church where the pastor doesn't pay attention to these things, doesn't know what is going on in the church, doesn't know what is happening. It's not a good church. I come here during the day and I go around, I go around, look at the instruments, and I even know that some instruments are dusty, dusty, they become dirty. They have not been dusted for about three months now. I know all that. The instrument, this instrument, this one is dirty. I don't think I've been clean for three months. And today I was in the office when I heard some people were playing, playing the instruments. And I, being the pastor, I know that because of COVID-19, now you can't get instruments to buy in town. You can't get music. All the, that all the instruments have been, have been sold out. You can't get instruments. So if anything breaks down, you can't get a part to buy. Many of you don't know that. If the keyboard should break down right now, to, to get a new keyboard is impossible. So immediately I sent that they, and I said that they shouldn't be using the church instrument to practice. We have spare instruments that can be used to practice. You can know that if the drum, let's say the, the, the foot pedal should break, to get it to buy will be a problem. Or they will sell to us at 10 times the price. So the pastor the overseer, the leader, the elder, the deacon, deaconess, must have all these things in mind. You don't just come and go, come and go, come and go. No. The other day I was in the church during the rain season. It was raining very hard. Pastor, I say pastoral oversight. Oh, say pastoral oversight. In the church, it was raining very, very, very hard. Very, very hard. In the office. So I walked through the, the rain and came here to see if there was a leakage. I wouldn't just sit here in the office comfortable and it was raining, it was raining hard, heavy downpour. I came here and fortunately, God willing, that day God was so good. Deacon Parkins was here, uh, Amos was here, uh, and then the uh, Esther, and I think that time Emanuela had not come. And you, lo, and, lo and behold, water, that day the rain was falling in this direction. So water was coming through the, the windows and flooding this place. You can remember that day? Yes. So about four of us, for about one hour, were using rags, just collecting the water so that the water would not soak the carpet. I could have sat in the office and not care. I'm not even think. I said, ah, the way this rain, let me just go, it's rain, let me go around and make sure everything is all right. I went around and came here, lo and behold, and that day, William was here, Amos was here, and uh, the Mr. Adima was here, uh, Esther, and the Grace, that time Grace was here. Mr. Adieta. We spent over one hour, as the water was coming, we were using duster, you know, so I, otherwise this whole place will become flooded. So when you say pastoral oversight, that's what we mean. You don't just come and preach and go. Come and preach and go. You have to, and this goes for all the elders, deacons, deaconesses, and even church members. That's how God will see that though. This person I can use. When God sees that you, God then calls you and God will use you. I remember one day I said, if that man, I know you're not like it, but when we went to chapter 4, you know, you, whenever it rained heavily, heavily, the, world, the place would get flooded. And once it nearly entered the auditorium, 
So one day, I came to the church, and then the rain just came down. Heavy. So I said, oh, I won't go inside. Let me stay outside and see how this place gets flooded. And I saw the water coming up. Up, 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 up. And I realized that the hole through with the drain hole where the water should pass had been, somebody had blocked it. So the water was not getting the chance to go flow outside. So I went inside. Now some like man sitting down with his two legs on the, ta- on the table. If you remember that day, I was so angry with him. <laughs> now I said, hey, open up. Which one is so tossing out in office? They're so tossing. I don't know what is going on outside. <laughs> you remember that day? I mean, I don't hide anything. I, I was wet. I was wet. So then he came outside with me. And then we passed through the rain and unblocked the rain, the drain, before the water could flow outside. These are some examples of pastoral oversight. Somebody must be there, the leader and all the leaders. Open your eyes, open your eyes, make sure that everything is is going on very well. Don't think, imagine, you know, um, anticipate. There's something called anticipation. What could be happening before you sit down and relax? If you if you lack the, this the church, if your pastor lacks that, then the church cannot be a good church. You not learn much. You not learn much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you are you blessed today? Are you all blessed today? I don't think today nobody has any questions. But today being the last one, if anybody has any questions, we just take some five minutes for questions. Five minutes. Me boy, time. If you have any question, let's have it. Anybody has any question? Hey, you have been in beer for for three months and you can't. You ask. Okay, let let's hear you. What's your question? Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do that here. <laughs> we do that here. <laughs> we do it here. But you see, if 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 the the mutual assistance and the common cause becomes that's all, and there's no spiritual thing, then becomes a charity charity organization. It becomes charity. After all, during the COVID-19, during the lockdown, during the lockdown, you know, we, we made a list. We made a list of all the branches of those who are in need. Tema here, we got 10 people. I remember the, the figures. 10 people who, who wanted assistance. 10. Michelle Camp, we had nine. They needed serious assistance. Tashi brought a list of 120. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 it's not possible. <laughs> then when we went into it, we found that only about, only about eight <laughs> qualified. They, they didn't understand it, so they made, they made a list of the whole church. I said, no, only those who are in need then we came, we came down to about eight. We said, Nibwe Town, only about three or four. And we, we helped them. We came to the assistance. The, 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 the welfare came in, certain individuals donated. Only those who got, they, they know. But if we didn't need anything, who know? But we came in to help some people. 
Um, and also, for example, when you are bereaved, when you lose your parents, don't, don't even go with you to the funeral at a, at a Chibon Pesi. Or you don't see that as a mutual uh, common cause. When you are bereaved from a Chibon Pesi, don't you go with you? Yes. And those who go, the elders who go, apart from the, the mind that the church gives them, they also, con- elders are not, they don't, yes. Those who go, they also make contribution they add to the church's money and give to their brother or sister. And if you know that somebody in serious need, serious need, but there are some things that we will not do. For example, will not pay your rent. School fees, somebody may help now and then, but so that people will not abuse the system, we don't pay rent. Uh, we won't give you transfer money to work and back. We don't give out loans. We are not a, a loans company, savings and loans company. But it's a matter of life and death. We come in and help. And now and then, you know, I call some, I told, I call, we are not here, but I was it testing, I, 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 I told them that now and then, the Lord will just give me somebody, I call the person to the office and I say, oh, please take this. Some names will just come up and say, take this. For what reason? And they are so appreciative of, of, of what you do. So we, we do it to some extent. But we're not going to sell our houses and, and donate and share the money. You know, you know every generation and, and how they do things. But we still do these things. Have I answered your question? God bless you. No, what you used to do is that we are not, we are not, we are not doing the canon. No, no. no. Uh, the question is that uh, when we're in chapter uh, one, one and a half, and two and two and a half, uh, end of the year we used to have a, a party where you know, but we were inviting people to bring the food. If you remember, we were inviting the members to bring the food. They were, the members were cooking and bringing them to a the church. Then we all sit down and share. And the church would then would then make an make an input. And I, I've been do, I, I've been doing that from Teshi. And when the Christmas time, we used to have Christmas party. Members would bring the food, and they were bringing food plenty. But I got to a time when they were not bringing anymore. They were not bringing anymore. As our numbers increased, the food decreased. So we scale down on that. Any other question? Yes. Let me praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, I want to know at what age does one dedicate his or her child to God? When the child is um, when the child is born and named, named, yeah, the child has a name. He or she can dedicate it. Uh, we haven't done that for a long time. I, I have to confess. Um, but, and I've also explained that children's dedication is different from praying for the children. We pray for the children all the time. Child dedication or children's dedication is different from praying and blessing the children. No, what you are doing, if you want your, your child dedicated, what you are saying, what you are saying to the Lord is that. I'm ready and willing to give this child for the youth, for God's use. If God wants to use this child when he or she is grown up, I'm going to train up this child. I, the parent, I'm going to train up this child in such a way that when he or she is grown up and God wants to use him or her, he or she will be ready. I prepared him. So a lot depends on you, the parents. So when you are bringing your child, that's what you are saying. That's what we mean by children dedication. You are dedicating your child to the Lord. You are giving the child to the Lord. In the same way, when you buy a car, a new vehicle, and you want the vehicle dedicated, let's say you buy a truck or you buy a taxi, and you say we should dedicate the vehicle, 
different from praying by the vehicle but then what you are saying is that this short trial every time we have church meeting sundays and tuesdays i'll bring this short talk to the church and then when we close i'll fill my total with members and go and drop everybody in his or her bedroom I see many of us we dedicate our children and don't see, we don't see that car anymore the only the only person we see in that car is you so that, that car is not available for god's use but when you bring your vehicle for dedication what you are saying is that i give up my car for god's use so that every sunday or whenever the church meets you may even go around and pick some members bring them to the church free of charge then after closing, you fill your vehicle with members and you take them to community one station or wherever. That's what you are saying. But we don't do that. When you say it's going to dedicate your, your house, you built a house or you, you, you rented a, 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 a hall and chamber, oh, the pastor, come and dedicate that. What you are saying is that you are surrendering your place for, for use by God so that after that, you can even form a fellowship in the area. You make your house like a house of God. Oh, my hand is getting hot now. As I said, my hand is getting hot. You made that place a house of God. Fellowship. Going on. But we don't do that. We go and dedicate plots, dedicate houses, homes. Then that is it. So, with regards to children... Once the child is born and has been given a name, has a name, that is it. As you parents to bring the child forward, you are saying that, Lord, I'm going to train up this child the way he or she should go, the way he should go. And then when he is grown up, he will not depart from it. And I read it if you want to use him or her. That's up to you, Lord. So you make sure you train that child to make it possible for God to use that child. And that means that even the, 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 the course, the, the child's occupation, job, you have to watch it carefully. You know, we make sure that child doesn't become an armed robber. God has no use for armed robbers. Make sure that child doesn't go into work. That will make it difficult for God. You have dedicated a child to God. And you, it, once done is the, the rest of the child's life. And you, the parents, must always remember that. That's what we mean. So when you, if, if you want your car prayed over, that's what oh, that is blessed this car for you. We'll, we'll pray for the car. But if you say dedication, and I tell them, like, when you say dedication, that means that you are making that vehicle available. Whenever the church is meeting, like all nights, Sundays, you go around and pick people, bring them to the church. And when you close, take them back, drop them some convenient, and God will take note of that. But we pray about cars, vehicles, and always is that same person sitting in the car. And everybody else, who, everybody else is walking, including myself. We are all walking. Any other question? Have you, have you, are you, are you learning some things today? Yes. Yeah, we'll take the last one there. Yes. Good question. When the child is under your roof, her question is that maybe by the time there's child the child, the child is a bit grown, a bit grown, maybe not 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 at birth, maybe some eight years, you know. Once it's a child and under your roof, and you are taking care of the child, you are the parents, you are the parents. Doesn't matter. You just you decide. You the parents decide that I want just like Hannah and the husband. You decide I want to dedicate this child for God's use. God may or may not use the child, but the fact that you are prepared, just like Abraham, the fact that you are you are ready to give up the child, that is all that God looks at. 
That's all that God looks at. So you can say, oh, 11, the child is 11 years old. But when my church where I was, we were not doing children's education service. But now, some that came my children, at any age, you can bring the child. And we are in my book, I've even said that if you have neighbors, neighbors or relatives who also have children, maybe in their church, they are not doing that. Or they are not, they are not even believers. But somehow they understand. You can explain things to them, tell them what it means, and if they are willing, I don't, uh, this, my church, we don't do it, but I would like my child, if God will take him or her and use, use, I'll be very happy. So, take my child. They may not be members of this church. You are having a children's education service, you can bring your neighbors, children, relative children, after you have explained to them and they have agreed, you can even bring them. And they will dedicate them unto the Lord. They don't have to be your children. Not only your children. Other, other children belonging to relatives and friends, but first make sure that they understand. Then tell them their responsibility. That they, after that, they must make sure the child will grow up in the house of God. I could teach on, I could teach on this for, for a long time. But I think we all get a picture. Amen. Are we all blessed this evening? New Boy Town. Any question from New Boy Town? No. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So with that, we come to the conclusion of the benefits of the assembly. And church, bear, the, bear these things in mind. You may not be here forever. But with that, pastoral oversight. Very, very important. Pastoral oversight. Very important. Obviously the pastor can do what he likes. The pastor must make sure that the right things are done. Right things are done. Amen. I know these things, so when, when um, I don't see it, I can, I can, I, I notice it. When I don't see it, I know it. I was, the person is not doing it. He's not doing it. That person, is so that, so that, that, it's out of ignorance. So I don't do, I don't chastise the person. Then he or she, but after today. After today, now, now that you know everything, if you don't do it, I will hold you responsible. <laughs> Where there's no law, there's no sin. When, when the law is not there, there's no sin. But now that you know the law, and the law has come, so if you go against it, you'll be chastised. You'll be punished. This one is not, it's not a, a discipline, it's punishment. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands for Jesus. Let you on our feet. But before today, we want to close. Uh, we are speaking for a long time. So let's take us. Uh, Sunday, we are starting our miracle service. Please, just take us here for two minutes. This Sunday, we are starting our miracle services. And uh, it's only for two hours. Beginning at 12 o'clock, uh, I have some, I've drawn up a new order of miracle service. A new order of service. This one is for the media department. Media, that's your copy of the timetable. There's a copy on the notice board. So, give this to the media department for me before I forget. And then this is for prayer department. Your copy is here. Ocean department and um, music department. I've written the departments. You can give them. Departments are down there. So, the meeting will begin officially at 12 noon. The church service is 9 to, 9 to 10 or 10.30. By 10.30 we close. Then we have, one and a half, we have one and a half hours break. The miracle service begins at 12 o'clock. But the uh, prayer department will have a pre-service prayer at 11.45. So 15 minutes before, 15 or 10 minutes before the meeting starts, prayer department. So, when you get a copy, look at it. 10 to 15 minutes before, that's 11.15, 11.45, 11.15, pray service prayers. And then the meeting starts at 12 o'clock. And we've, we've, we've made it very, very brief. We've left a lot of things. So, we'll pray for, when we begin, we'll pray for half an hour, 30 minutes. 
prayer, with worship and praise for 30. So the music department, that part also will be involved. 30 minutes of, of prayers. Intense, effective, fervent prayers for 30 minutes. That's 12 to 12.30. And then we only read a, a scripture. We'll, there will not be, it's not be a sermon. It's a scripture reading for 10 or 15 minutes. Scripture reading. That's 12.30 to 12.45. And then we'll get into the ministrations and the prayers for one hour. One hour. Ministrations and prayers. 12.45 to 1.45. Then we'll take our offerings and announcements. And by 2 o'clock, we close. Depending on the number of people who come, 2 o'clock, we close. Now, we will not... We will not... Uh, arrange ourselves like we do before. No, we we'll maintain our, our church. We we'll stay where we are, but we we'll remove the first, the first three rows, the first three rows of chairs, and pack them on the sides. When we finish, we we'll put them back according to the numbers to make more, create more room here. One, two, three. We pack them to the sides. The pastors who sit over here and then that is it that is it come with your face masks come with your sanitizers and we we'll still observe the social distancing face masks sanitizers and social distancing and when you come for what you minister to the ushers will sanitize your hands and ushers also uh, let's have enough sanitizers my hands, their hands. Each time you, 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 you catch somebody, sanitize your hands. And that is, you see what the Lord will do. As time goes on, we, we can make changes, make it more and more perfect. Does this sound good to you? Praise the Lord. You know, they have said that uh, because we are not praying or doing the miracle, they, they are taking the opportunity to attack, to attack our members. To attack our members and since we stopped the miracle services many of our members have been attacked now i meet with them privately sometimes i meet during the week and i pray for them individually those who are going through attacks we arrange we meet here on thursdays or weekdays when you are not here we we'll take them to deliverance uh, we've been doing that but we want to restart resume our miracle services now all the ushers all the ushers must make the point to come. Church workers, let's all come. Ushers, media department. Now the media department, listen carefully. Don't cover, don't stream the prayer part. Hello? Can you hear me, media department? Can you hear me? Yes. Don't stream the, the prayer part. That's the 12 to 12.30. Don't stream it. Don't, don't record it. It's not necessary. But start recording and streaming from 12.30 from the, from the scripture reading to the end. So that we, have, we, have, we call it one and a half hours. One and a half hours. Because, because of the virus, those who want to watch on YouTube, Facebook, they may not have time to watch all the two hours. Because they're overseas. They don't have time to sit there and watch all the two hours. So we try to make it compact. One and a half hours. Anybody who is interested can, can watch it. So, when we come, no cameras for 30 minutes. Cameras will start rolling at 12.30. Is that, is that clear? Okay, God bless you. Um, I think that is it. Next week Saturday, not this one, sir. Next week Saturday, we, have to, we will do communal labor. That the dust. This year, the rains have been very scanty. The dust is a lot. So, next week Saturday, Next weekend, not this, not this coming weekend. We'll do, we'll just, not inside, do some communal labor, clean up a bit. Amen. But, yes, yeah, prayer department, um, yeah, wanted to meet, wanted to meet, but I'll say, to, I'll just say for the pulpit. Um, Reverend Alpha have been part of the prayer department, you no. Know, since she came from Niboy Town, 
she been part of the prayer department, as you know. Uh, being a, a reverend minister, uh, I think it's, it's, it's proper, it's appropriate, that we should make her the head, the leader of the prayer department, then supported by the elders, Elder Christian, elders Christian and uh, Belinda. Mm. You support her. So, um, uh, for all our informi- for all of the information of all of us, so we make Reverend Alpha the leader of the prayer department. Supported um, elders Christian and Brenda have done a good job. They have done a good job. A good job. And then also we we'll, we'll maintain the daily prayers. You know. Um, Every day, uh, prayers must go on here. So, have those who can pray on Monday, as if you are doing that. Uh-huh. So, Monday, those who can pray, Tuesday, we are here. So, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, have people come and pray here. In the, if that's for one hour, seven to eight, or eight to nine, as they, as they, as they want. And then, once a month, once a month, once every two months, then we all will meet. And I'll do my best then to meet with you, and then pray with you. Once a month, maybe on a Monday, sorry, on a Thursday, Thursday, yes. Thursday, when I'll come, they will all meet, so I will, will then fellowship together and pray together. Once a month. So that's what we do. Reverend, is that there with you? All right. That's all. Anything else? Okay, let's take our offerings in our hands. Tomorrow, Wednesday. Very good. God has opened a, a new door for her, uh, which is starting tomorrow. She needs the grace of God. You know, when you are starting a new job, hmm, the job description is there. But until you get there, you will not know exactly what it is. And you need the grace of God regarding wisdom. Wisdom of how to go about it. Direction. At times you don't know which what must I do, but God will give you direction. So wisdom, direction. And you need to be str- you need to have strength. So you can go to work on time and come home strong. That like not the oh, whole today I was I was sick, so I couldn't come. No. You need strength. M- your mortal body. You need the anointing. Anointing. So that anything, anybody working against you. Especially with the breakthrough, that person will not prevail against you. With these things you need, so that money will come into your hands. Money will come into your hands. Father, for the name of Jesus, give your daughter these things. Grant her, O oh Lord, divine wisdom, divine direction, strength, and anointing. Lord, she may excel in this work that money will come into her hands in the name of Jesus. Daughter, take, 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 take. Take it all, daughter, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Clap for Jesus. Anybody here who has no offering? No offering at all. Anybody here with no offering? 
No offering. You don't have an offering. Go to your mother and get an offering. <laughs> God bless you. Anybody else? Even if your mother is not here, you, you can. Anybody else can come. If you don't have an offering, can come for mine. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. I'll give mine to you as an offering. Okay, now you have an offering, but the offering is so small that you yourself you are you are ashamed of it. But you wish you could give a lot more. It's so small that I buy you is it's so small. Anybody else are not here? Your offering is much smaller than what you have liked to give. That's what I'm saying. Your offering is short. You can come for mine. So you all have enough offerings. That means you are all giving more than 50 CDs each. That's what you are telling me. Because I'm, I'm coming, can come for this and you are not coming. Sunday morning service, followed by miracle service at 12 o'clock. But pre service prayers will start at quarter to 12. So if you want to join the prayer department, stay here or come early for pre service prayers. And we are believing God to do mighty things in our midst on Sunday. Amen. There's a copy of the timetable and notice board. You want to look at it if you want before you go. Notice board. Study it so you know what is going on. We are giving all the branches copies. Now, set out your hands in front of you. The grace and the goodness. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives. We are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord continue to bless each and every one of you.